Nation, and welcome to Maximize Your Squat for more strength, flexibility, balance, and overall power. The purpose of this video is to teach you guys how to utilize proper form when going ass to grass in your squats. But one of the most important things to keep in mind when doing this is that you have to be flexible. If you're really tight throughout your hips and shoulders, it's going to be really hard for you to maintain that proper form when doing the full range of motion of the exercise. And if you can't train in full range of motion of any exercise, whatever range you're not training in, you're going to be weak. So if you want to maximize the amount of muscle stimulation you're going to get from doing a squat and your glutes, quads, and hamstrings and all the other muscles involved, you need to do the full range of motion. So what I want to do real quick is go over some stretches for you guys that you can do whether you're doing them when you wake up in the morning, before you go to sleep, or before you actually squat to help you loosen up a little bit. Now the first one I'm sure you guys have done before, and what you're going to do is you're going to get down into a squat, just like this, so a body weight squat, keep your chest up, your back's going to be arched, and all you're going to do is push your knees out like that. And the goal here is to open up your hips, and whenever you're doing static stretching like this, you want to hold it for about 30 seconds. But you also want to make sure when you're doing this stretch that you're not leaned over like this. You want to make sure you're doing actual squat form. So chest up, come down, keep your back arched, and push your knees out in this position. The more you can practice being in the down position, the better you're going to be at doing it when performing the actual squat. Another great exercise you can do, or another great stretch you can do to kind of loosen up your hips is some hip flexor stretches. And what all you have to do is put one foot forward and one foot back. And it's super important whenever you're doing a hip flexor stretch to make sure your back leg always stays straight. Keep your back leg straight, hands on your hips, and then just go down as low as you can. If you start to bend your knee, you're not going to feel the stretch throughout your hip flexor. So leg straight, down as much as you can. And once again, you're going to hold this possession for about 30 seconds. And then switch positions to the other side and hold there for about 30 seconds. Now as far as sets, you guys can do two, three sets of this stuff. Whatever feels right for you. You're going to see where you're tight as you start doing the stretches. Obviously where you're the most tight is where the stretches you want to do the most of. That's why it's a good idea to do it in the morning and at night, especially if you really want to work on your flexibility. Another quick stretch you can do, just some side to side stretching, some more of a dynamic stretch. We're going to get your feet nice and wide and go out to the side and then go out to the other side like this. And what we're doing is we're just kind of getting those hips stretched out and loosened up. Now if you can't do this, you can't go as low as I am, you have to start higher, that's fine. If you're not that flexible, you're only going to be able to get more flexible by doing the stretches. So what you do is start high and then just try to go lower and lower and lower as you do it. Once again, make sure you're keeping your chest up and your back arched. So as you go side to side, you're staying in that squat form and not going like this and being hunched over. A couple other stretches I want to show you guys. This is one of my favorites for the hips. And you can do this against the wall. I'm going to use this pole right here so it's a little easier for me to get into the position. What you want to do is get your butt as close to the wall as possible. So usually when there's a flat wall, what I'll do is kind of go towards the wall sideways like this and then put my feet up like that to get into position. But I have a pole, so I'm going to get really close. You can put one foot up like this. And you want to have this leg at about a 90 degree angle. Push up off the wall, cross your legs like this, and then start to sit. And try to keep this leg straight. What I'll do sometimes is use my hand and push my knee out so that as I sit, I really feel the stretch throughout the outside of my glute. And for me, my problem side is my left side. So I can go pretty low right here. And you want to try to get your lower back to touch the ground. And then when I switch sides, this is where the problems come in. Oh yeah. So I got some work to do myself. And once again, you're going to hold these positions for about 30 seconds. Go back and forth a few times. Another stretch I'm going to show you guys, and this will really help you out if you're trying to get into that deep squat form, is if you can, try to find a pole that you can straddle with your legs. And what you want to do is get as close as possible and put your hands on the outside of the pole right here and go down. Keep your chest up, 
and then just kind of sit in your squat position. So your back is arched, chest is up, and try to hold this just like this. And then what you can even do is kind of rock side to side, especially if you can't get your heels to touch the ground right here, and just open up those hips and loosen up. Now I said it's important to make sure your hips are loose and your shoulders. So really quick for the shoulders, two simple stretches you can do, but warm ups. You can just do a, a dumbbell rotation where you make sure that your arm is on the side of your body. You have a 90 degree angle right here and your shoulder is down on the mat the entire time. And then just rock back and forth like this. And just do a set of like 10 to 12 reps. And you'll notice I'm only going as far as my flexibility will allow me. I can go all the way down like this, but my arm comes up off the ground. You want to keep everything nice and flat. Same thing in the front. I can force it like this, but now my shoulder is coming up off the mat. So you want to make sure you push it down and focus on keeping it as flat as possible as you go back and forth. And obviously, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. Usually for this, I'll do like two sets of 12 reps per side, and that helps me get pretty loose. And then my favorite one to do is the shoulder breakers. And the way you do the shoulder breakers is just find the pole that you can grab wide enough to go up, over, and back, just like this. Keep your chest up, and then as you get better and better at this, try to bring your hands in closer and closer. If you're not that flexible, you might have to go extremely wide to do this. As you become more flexible, you'll be able to go even closer. And if you're a freak, like one of my younger brothers, you can put your hands together like this and go up and over your back and go all the way down. It's kind of creepy, so I can't do that. <laughs> now on to the squat. So I'm going to show you guys some tips for high bar first and then for low bar. Now you want to keep in mind, whenever you're doing a squat and you're going down and you're going up, you want to go as far as you can without having too much of a butt wink. And what that is, is when you go super low and your, your, your flexibility starts to go away and the tightness starts to take over, your butt will actually kind of wink like this as you go down too low. So you want to try to avoid that because it can cause some issues throughout your spine, your lower spine. but at the same time, it's kind of hard to avoid as you're trying to force that ass to grass to improve your flexibility. So a little bit of butt wink, in my opinion, is okay, but if it starts to get really bad, have somebody watch you, then try to stop before it gets too bad and then continue working your flexibility. So for a high bar squat, what I like to do typically is I'll grab a little higher, I mean a little closer on the bar with my hands, and then you want to find that spot on your traps that kind of feels like a shelf and that's where the bar is going to sit right in that shelf just like this and the goal is when you're squatting like this you want to try to get your elbows under the bar as you go down and keep them there throughout the entire movement so from here I'm going to squat I'm going to keep my elbows under the bar like this and then go back up what you see happen a lot of times in gyms is People have tight shoulders, so they can't keep their elbows forward like this. And as they go down and squat, their elbows go back, and that actually pushes their upper body forward like this. And you start to see like a combination of a good morning squat. And that's not good, you can really hurt your lower back, especially if you're squatting a lot of weight. So real quick, hands in kind of close, elbows forward, all the way down as low as you can, and then back up. Make sure that as you're doing a squat on the way down and on the way up that you're pushing your knees out to the side. If you're having a hard time with foot placement, when I do a high bar squat, personally, I tend to go a little closer with my feet. And what you can do is if you don't really know where your feet feel the most comfortable is either use no bar at all or use super lightweight and kind of just get down into the squat position like this and wiggle your feet around a little bit and see where it feels the most comfortable and then utilize that position when doing the squats. The second form we're gonna go over is the, high, uh, the low bar squat. So for the low bar squat, I like to go a little wider with my hands and the bar is gonna sit like right under my shoulders, just like this. And for this squat, I tend to go a little wider with my feet. Once again, you can use that same trick, just go down into the bottom position and see where your feet feel the most comfortable 
maybe you gotta turn your toes out a little bit, maybe you gotta turn them in, whatever works for you. But the same thing here, try to keep your elbows under the bar, keep your chin up, keep your chest up, arch your back, and go all the way down as low as you can, and try not to butt wink. Just like this. Push your knees out, just like that. <clears throat> now, depending on where you're at with your fitness level, you might have to lower the weight to practice these to have a better squat. But I guarantee you, if you take these tips that I'm giving you and apply them to your squat, you might have to lower the weight a little bit at first, but in no time, you'll be much stronger, more flexible, and have way more power than you've ever had. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tip video. If you have any suggestions, comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.